Professor Lisa Randall. I'm a professor of physics here at Harvard. I'm also the author of several books designed to bring science and ideas about science to the general public. I encountered a podcast from Lex Friedman in December where you were interviewed and you discussed the uh, Project Sesame, which is for Peace in the Middle East from CERN. And I was wondering if you wanted to talk about that a little bit more. So um, I'm not, just want to clarify, I'm not an expert. I haven't really worked on this, but it is also, it's not about Peace in the Middle East, which is what makes it so interesting. It's actually a project um, in part conceived at CERN, which is an organization that brought together European scientists post-World War II to do particle physics and has done things most notably the discovery of the Higgs boson. But they thought a similar project in the Middle East could actually be very useful in the sense that not only would it be scientifically beneficial for everyone there, but the idea is to bring together people from all the Middle East countries, including Israel, including Egypt, including Jordan, Iran, so many different countries, and to have them work together on a scientific project, rather than be talking specifically about peace or about the, to actually share common interests and work together to make progress. And um, personally, I, I love this idea. I think that, you know, I've heard so many so-called debates where people say their extreme points of view and people don't talk to each other. I think one way to get people talking to each other is to have shared goals and to have people work together, in this case, on a scientific project. And um, it, it, I think it was launched in 2017. It made a lot of progress. And of course, right now, things are very tricky and that's very sad because it is such a great idea and people were working together on it. It also, was, that's not to say it was not tricky. I think people had to be careful about I think the governments were not officially involved, but the scientists were involved. So the idea is to get people talking to each other. And I think that's a really important thing. And um, and I've also heard a couple of other examples of that in which we can discuss too. I just want to say it's, um, Sesame is a synchrotron light for experimental science and applications in the Middle East. That's what Sesame stands for. And it's the Middle East's first major international research center. So it's a really big deal in that sense. It's a third generation synchrotron X-ray source and it's situated in Jordan, which is a good place to situate it since it's a relatively neutral country in this environment. And it broke ground in 2003 and opened officially in 2017. The current members are Cyprus, Egypt, Iran, Israel, Jordan, Pakistan, Palestine, and Turkey. I mean, just think about that, to have an organization with those as the active members. And then of course, there are observer countries, including the European Union, including France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Japan, etc., and the UK and the US. Um, and the common vision drive, driving it is, in fact, the belief that humans can work together for a cause that furthers the interests of their own nations and that of humanity as a whole. And so the idea is to find ways to use it within the context of the Middle East. And it's really interesting um, scientifically because it has applications in many different fields, including biology, chemistry, but also some more practical um, applications as well. And so it's a very interesting idea of something that could be used by many people. It's not entirely esoteric, it's a, but it is advanced science. So I think that is also a very good place to situ, kind of thing to situate this in. So um, it's chemistry, physics, archeology, span environmental science. And so you really can have a, in principle a critical mass of users. And of course, right now the situation is very tricky with what's happened, but I think this is a very good thing to do in a peacetime environment and to try to be able to make this work. Um, in this context, I just want to mention also, I'm on the advisory board of something called the ICTP, the International Center for Theoretical Physics. And um, it's largely funded by the Italian government, but not solely. Um, it's located in Trieste, Italy, and it's actually a UNESCO organization. And it's a, and it's a physics center. And it has excellent physics. It has really good physicists. And I'm on the scientific council there. But what it's designed to do is to get people from less privileged countries, from more third world countries. It was founded by the Nobel Prize winner Abu Salam, uh, who's originally from um, Pakistan. And the idea is to give opportunities. And to, to visit, is it's a really interesting thing to do because you really do see a, a diversity of students and researchers. and. Uh, you know, the complexion is not the same as you would see at Harvard, for example, on the whole. Um, although there are people from all over and it's really exciting. And um, and so 
you know, I happened to have dinner there. I happened to meet five students who were visiting for the week. And I started talking to an Israeli student. There was a student who was from Iran. And there were students from France, Germany, and Austria, all at the same table. And we were mostly talking about the conference, which had to do with machine learning. But we were also talking about the political situation. And the thing is, it was a, it was a nice conversation. It's not like, you know, you realize that people all want the best at some level. And so, of course, you have to distinguish the um, goals of a nation from the goals of this particular political leaders and what people, but the fact is that people could sit and have a civil, civilized conversation and even a conversation where people in some sense can make progress in their own, own thinking. Where it's not like people are coming from such extreme points of view. They're coming with an overlapping interest in science and an overlapping point of view in many ways, even though they grew up in different places. So I think that, you know, someone was just talking today about um, organizing a concert with someone from Israel and someone from Palestine. You know, I think having having things not always specifically about the issue, but about their common humanity mm -hmm. is a really good thing to do. And I think um, that Sesame was conceived with this vision in mind. And so I, I really admire that kind of thing. And um, one of the driving physicists was, was an Israeli physicist, Eliezer Rabinovici, and he was on the CERN Scientific Council. And they got involved and decided that they could see a similar model hopefully working there. And so I'm still hopeful, although obviously right now is a tricky, is a very difficult time. You know, obviously there's been a lot of tension here on the Harvard campus, um, but there's, and you know, that's not the major tension. The major tension is what's happening where, where it's actually happening. But you also see that people are having trouble talking to each other. People are angry. Some of it is displaced anger about other issues. And so I really like the idea of sort of finding common ground, finding finding diversions in some sense that people can, can think about. So rather than trying to just directly solve all of these issues, get people who can develop some trust with each other. And once you have that trust, I think it will be much easier to have real conversations. I mean, the fact is that, um, you know, here at Harvard, people are good at debates. They're good at having ideological positions. But the fact is, at some level, we have to figure out a way to converge and to find peaceful solutions. And of course, it, you know, it's not up to us, it's up to those governments. But I would like to see more common missions. I mean, you know, they have lots of issues in the Middle East that they can work on together, environmental issues, for example, or water issues. And so, to, and I, I, of course, I like know everyone else don't have any answers or all the answers, but I do see that there is a role for at least you know taking a step back and thinking what are things that people can work on together and and like i said and i think students you know it would be nice to think that students will still want to work together they can still trust each other i mean the situation now is so horrible i don't know if it's gone beyond the point where these things can can work and you know there's so much anger and so much bitterness but it, if we're going to get past that it has to be through some common goals that we all have you know if you look back at even even when Eddington showed that Einstein's theory was light by measuring the bending of light. Part of his goal as a British scientist was to show that the theory of a German physicist was correct. This was post-World War II. I mean, part of the reason CERN was formed was because they wanted to have European scientists work together. And it's just, let me be clear, it's not just political missions. I mean, these have done amazing science. And because these countries were work to, working together, they could do this project that none of the countries individually on their own could have done. So it's not just for this ideological reasons or, or idealistic reasons, I should say. Um, but it has this great benefit that by working together, you know, we, can, we can make progress in science. And a lot of the problems that the world faces today are global problems. So unless we figure out ways to work together, we're never going to solve these problems.